Today marks the 10th day of Elul. We're 10 days into the journey of soul searching so that we are prepared and ready to welcome the High Holy Days with an open heart. Open heartedness is something that is difficult to achieve these days. We're closed off out of fear, out of anger, out of the feeling of being unmoored from the life we've previously known. This pandemic and the social and political upheaval have caused us to question everything about our interactions with others, how we move throughout the world. However, open-heartedness is something for which we can and should still strive. It's what we're called to do during this month of Elul. Looking ahead one month from now, we will be 10 days into the month of Tishrei, Yom Kippur Day. In one month, we'll be seeking our last moments of atonement between God and ourselves, between ourselves and others. We are given this gift of time, this month that we're currently in, as a runway up to the High Holy Days to examine ourselves, our practices, our actions, our thoughts. In order to do this fully and with care, we have to open up a bit and lead with our hearts, lead with kindness. Rabbi Alan Liu writes in his book, This is Real and You Are Completely Unprepared, the 10 days of teshuva are days of renewal, days when we are not only concerned with change and transformation, but with reinvigorating, refreshing, and reimagining our lives. Days when we are obliged to ask ourselves a number of difficult and unpleasant questions. Rather than waiting until those 10 days of teshuva, we have time now to prepare, to answer these questions, to open our hearts to our true selves. In order to get there, we can ask ourselves, how do we want to feel in one month on Yom Kippur? What is holding us back from getting to that place? What do we want to give up or lean into? What qualities of ourselves do we want to magnify? And what attributes of ourselves can we release? May this journey be one of renewal and open-heartedness. Hello. My name is Rabbi Alana Baden, and I'm so glad to share this moment of Elul with you. I'd like to share with you a story and a reflection that I think is fitting to the season. It was a beautiful day when a rabbi and a soap maker decided to go out for a stroll. They were enjoying the warm weather and each other's company when the soap maker turned to the rabbi and said, Rabbi, I have to get something off my chest. I've listened to your sermons for so many years now about the merits of having faith and religion, but I just don't get it. Sure, religion teaches all of these highfalutin morals and all of these lofty values and ethics, but look at this world. It's filled with pain, with corruption, with suffering. So I ask you, Rabbi, what good is religion? Before the rabbi could answer, out of nowhere, a large rubber ball came flying through the air, headed right toward the rabbi and the soap maker. Fortunately, the rabbi had quick reflexes and she caught the ball before it smacked her friend, the soap maker, in the face. Soon enough, a small child came running up to the pair, all full of apologies for losing control of the ball. The rabbi returned the ball to the child and assured the child that everything was okay, no one was hurt. And the soap maker and the rabbi watched as the child went back to play with the friends. The rabbi then turned to the soap maker and said, oh, I just don't get it. Please help me. Look at that child. Absolutely filthy. And you are a soap maker. How can it be all the soap in the world? They tell me that soap can clean practically anything. Yet that child is so very dirty. The soap maker protested and said, how can you say that about soap? You are a learned person, Rabbi. Surely you should know that soap is only good if one actually uses it. Aha, said the rabbi with a slight grin. And so it is with religion. We can teach it. People can say they have learned it. 
But until they have actually used it, until they have actually truly understood the meaning of its lessons, the power of its teachings, the weightiness of its principles, and apply it to life, only then can religion make a positive difference in our world. My friends, I am so grateful for the gift of our religion and our traditions and for the gift of this month of Elul that begs us to take this time to reflect on the past year as an opportunity to better understand ourselves and to recalibrate ourselves so that we can go into the new year with more intentions of how we want to truly be. And so I invite you to join me as we consider these questions. When we look back on the past year, what were our greatest achievements and what were our greatest disappointments? What have been our times of joy and what were our times of sorrow? Of what are we most proud and of what do we have regret? What event has had the most impact on us in a positive way? And what event has had the most impact on us in a negative way? How did we help others and how did we let them down? To whom should we say thank you? To whom should we say I am sorry? And to whom should we say I forgive you? even if they don't apologize to us and even if we don't say it out loud. How can we go into this new year with greater self-knowledge and awareness? And how can we use the self-knowledge and awareness to help us be better and truer to ourselves in this coming year? Thank you so much for joining me in this thought work. May we all experience health and safety, fulfillment and meaning as we go forward in these months ahead, in these days of Anglo, anticipating our sacred season of the High Holy Days and the New Year. <laughs>